Mole worms, yet another creature that may not appear to be anything beyond the occasional nuisance, but instead leads to far more than cocoons while also providing some interesting topics of discussion themselves. And no need to wander too far from our kitty friends, as mole worms share the same space within the birch biome, but note that you will be running into them amidst the grasslands, and you can even rubbish through the tumbleweeds of the desert or endure the quakes of below in hopes of finding them. But their burrows, their burrows are what we are looking for. Think of their hidey holes the same as you would that of rabbits, especially given that both rabbits and mole worms will respond from their respective homes two and a half days after their cold-blooded murders. But once every blue moon, I tell you not to kill everything in sight, and this is one of those moments. During dusk and nighttime hours, leave the beasts themselves alone, but go around digging up their homes. Doing so gives you a chance to obtain a single piece of rock, flint, Niter, or even gold, while also receiving anything else the dudes may have snatched. And do not worry about destroying their homes, as they'll be digging a new one in mere seconds anyways. But what do I mean by them snatching things, though? Well, these creatures are quite simple, in that they worm about and steal your crap. Mole worms will emerge and track down minerals, gold, flint, niter, etc. Any trinkets and barbels that happen to be lying around, the things that you can trade to pick king and such. And heck, they'll even make a break with your gunpowder, although they'll probably regret doing so very quickly. Just make sure you're standing far enough away. The buggers hold quite a lot of little stuff actually, so be careful about what you leave lying around, as these guys will go through it fast. Here's a tip though, bait them. And not just to get their attention for personal use, more on that in a bit, but simply for a rudimentary mineral farm. Place a piece of mineral between walls and the moles will do nothing but oh so desperately try to grab it all up while you go about uprooting their burrows. And over and over again, you'll get renewable resources. It's not the most efficient thing in the world, but hey, it works. And the whole reason for doing it this way is to just keep the moles close by. As I was saying though, what also works is baiting them into a game or two or four of whack-a-mole. It's simple. Lay something shiny on the ground, or most any minerals, really, and one of the buggers will be too eager to notice the hammer at play and whack. You yeah, got yourself some moles. Usually the others will run on back, but if you're fast enough, you are going to be able to get multiple in a single go. But careful now. Mightier wolves can one-shot these guys, so maybe go a little easy on the roids now and then. Because I got something healthier for you. How about some guac? Serve up a mole worm with some juicy cactus flesh and some veg to create guacamole, a food item that restores 20 health and nearly 40 hunger. It ain't the best, nor is it the worst, but the food is really only used to summon a ulet from the rock den, just another of the many pets within Don't Starve Together, and a beautiful one at that, don't you agree? However, our wormy friends can be slaughtered in other ways too, like how logically you can turn two of them into a rain hat along with some other ingredients present here. The hat offers 70% resistance to wetness, so it is kind of commendable in that regard, but it will also protect the player from electrical damage, be it from natural lightning strikes or charged up milk producers. Useful, but kind of pointless with the umbrella in mind actually, but just keep the knowledge of it in your back pocket anyway. But now we're talking useful folks, the moggles, or Moogles? Whatever the heck they are, they're here and they're here to stay. And with two more moles, some doodads, and a glowberry, you too can have smelly vision. By the by, you need a greater glowberry from the hentai of the below and not just the ones that are picked off plants in order to craft a pair for yourself. And you'll want them, because they ain't just another light source. Because instead of a simple radius, the mongols allow the player to see 100% of their screen. And that is absolutely absolutely spectacular. As you can imagine, this mechanic is amazing when down under, as visibility down here is dog awful most of the time, but the Mongols truly shine in the ruins, as they can really help you navigate safely in and around clockworks and such without having to worry about what's around each corner 
because you can literally see the corner with these puppies equipped. Careful though, Mongols are one of those items that completely vanishes come 0% durability, and one can only refuel them via lesser and greater glow berries, each restoring 6.25 and 33.25% respectively. One final tip, if you bonk a mole worm or two and then wrap them up in some bundle and wrap, the game will consider the little guys homeless. Thus, the mole worms will dig completely new homes wherever you set them free, even while their old homes are still intact. Hence, duplicated mole worms and mole worm farms are born. Oh, and final tip number two, you can actually feed mole worms in your inventory using minerals. So munch away, my little wormy friends, munch away. But there you have it, everyone. Sort of quicker guide and yet another of the whimsical creatures within Don't Starve Together. Thanks for watching, folks. Well wishes to all out there, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.